Okay, so carrying where we left off in the last tutorial, we're going to go into a little bit more detail. Uh, we're actually going to add some actions to our, our movement map here. Um, so I'm just going to use the default one that's inside here at the minute, and I'm just going to rename it to mo movement. Um, so we'll use WASD to give this a value, um, and we're going to take the value on two axes. So we're going to have an X axis and a Y axis, Y being forward and back, X being left and right. I think that's the way it's done. Um, so what we'll do inside here is we'll actually change this to a pass through and we want a control type of a vector two. Okay, so what we're basically doing is we're telling it to pass the action type down to the actual binding itself, which is quite simple. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 2D vector composite. So you see it kind of creates um, our 2D vector for us. And I'm just going to call this um, uh, a WAST. I'm going to delete the default binding up here in there for us. We don't need that anymore. So we've got a... WSD, so we need to add bindings to up, down, left, and right. So as you can probably guess, we're literally going to use WAST. Um, so let me pop all of these in here quick. Cool. Um, and then what you'll do is you can also add a joystick to here if you wanted to use a joystick. But for now, we're just going to use our WAST. <laughs> so click save asset don't forget to do that and then let's go over to our script and continue where we left off okay so inside our awake we're now going to add our movement uh, the way we do this is we need to grab that vector 2. So we basically want that value. So we'll create a vector 2 and I'm just going to call it input underscore movement. Okay, so we're going to set this value. So similar to how we did the jump, I'm actually going to do it in front of the jump. I just want to keep the same order that I've got inside the input action itself. So um, we want to access our movement maps and then inside there we've got our movement. So it's similar up to sort of the performed point, but um, once we, once it is performed, instead of uh, just calling a function like we do down here, we're actually going to use the context value. Um, so we're going to plus equal create a reference for our context here. And then we're actually going to, instead of calling a function, we're just going to set a variable. So we'll have input movement here. And what we'll do is we'll just set that to x dot. No, let's not get value. Sorry. Read value. Um, and then we're, we're going to tell what type uh, we want to read the value as. So we want to read it as a vector two. Um, cool. Uh, so the way this matches up is inside our player input actions. Here, we've told it to return a vector two. So we're telling it to read the vector two. Um, so what that'll do is it doesn't actually fire a function. It basically just sets that variable. So if I create a update function here and I just um, do another debug.log I know it's going to spam but we'll just do the value of input movement just so that you can see it actually change so let's go ahead and if I've done everything right we should be able to just use WASD Okay, so it's quite um, basic with the whole debug. But I see if I go left, the first uh, value changes to minus one. If I go right, it changes to one. Um, and then same for up and down. Cool. It's exactly what we're expecting to see. What we'll do is we'll quickly do the mouse as well. Um, so we're going to do a similar thing. 
I'm going to call it instead of movement, I'm just going to call it view. I'll say view. Um, and we literally want to do the exact same thing, except we want to set the value of input underscore view instead of movement. <clears throat> um, and then obviously we want to create a new map, a new action. So let's go ahead back into our player input actions. And inside here, you see we've got movement. Let's create one called view. Similar to the other one, just want it to be a pass through. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, same as the other one, pass through and a vector two. So quite simple in that respect as well. Um, except instead of adding a composite, we're just going to use a um, a delta. So what that basically is, it's a vector two in itself. So we don't need to create one like we did here. Um, instead, we'll just pass it the mouse delta. There we go. Um, so we'll quickly, we'll just double check that that works. Um, I believe that's how we do it. It's been it's been quite a while since I've done this for my own project. So I'm just going to save that set. We're going to go through to our script here. And obviously, instead of using movement, we're going to use our new view. Okay, let me quickly debug log this value instead. Input view. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, so you can see in the bottom left, it does change as I move the mouse, which is exactly what we want. So now that we know it's working, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make these public just so we can see it in the inspector. Both of these public. Um, can I get rid of that debug.log? Don't need to spam that anymore. Okay, so if I click main camera, have a look inside, we can actually see the values change here, which I should have really done from the beginning, but we'll ignore that. So I see if I hit W, Y changes to 1, hit S, Y goes to minus 1, hit A and D, see it's exactly the same. The mouse is also very similar. So yeah, that's how we get the values from the inputs and then if I hit space you see how little I'm jumping. So nice and simple. So let me show you the bug I mentioned in the last episode. So inside the player input actions, I would actually call it a bug, I'm not too sure. Say we want a super jump. And we want similar bindings. I'm just going to delete this d-pad for now, just so we can see it a little bit nicer. Uh, I want the same binding, except instead of a press, I want it to be a hold. So by default, the hold time is 0.4 seconds. Um, I think that's how it works. And then if I save, so what I'm going to do is instead of jump, I'm going to create another super jump. Super jump. And I'm just going to create another one of these instead of jump, super jump. And we'll call our super jump function instead. Okay, so nice and simple, should just work straight off the bat. You'll probably see it before I even mention it. Okay, if I hit play now, let me just move this out of the way. If I hold space now, you see we get our super jump, but you'll see it also called the initial one first, um, which sometimes we might not want. Um, because it'll call the jump before the super jump and it might lead to um, an incorrect jump or a double jump type thing. We don't want to call those. So say for example, in my project, I have sliding. Um, so if you hold crouch, you slide. Um, but obviously, if it calls the crouch first, it's going to cancel the sprint. Um, so you see how it kind of gives you implications. Um, so I'll show you how I fix that in the next episode. Uh, but thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and see you in the next one.